extra vid this week just because I've got to get this out um, is about this guitar so this guitar everybody uh, looks to certainly my eye and I would say quite a few people's eyes as just a standard Epiphone Black Beauty Les Paul Custom it is however a total fake this guitar fooled me totally. Uh, I, I had heard, I've heard over years that people fake Epiphones and um, I didn't understand why, but I'll get to that later on because this guitar has taught me a lot of things and it's made me look at things in a certain different way and also it's been a very humbling experience this, this has and it's been a very eye-opening experience and it's been very cool actually. So I really love this guitar for a certain reason that I'll get to. Anyway, so I had heard uh, a while back now that there are fake Epiphone Les Pauls and the custom, the free pickup Black Beauty, is one of the most fake. But I was like, no, why would you fake an Epiphone? You know, why would you fake an Epiphone? It doesn't make any sense to me. Sure, if you're going to go this far to fake a Les Paul, you could shove a Gibson logo on it. Anyway. So, um... <clears throat> Thursday afternoon, rolled around, and um, I was scanning around on the Facebook marketplace to see what, you know, see what there was, if there was, if there was anything cool for sale, uh, and this thing popped up for stupid money, nothing, basically, absolutely nothing, you know, and I was immediately like, you can't be serious, so I immediately messaged this guy saying, is it still available, he said yes, uh, I went and bought it that day, and, um, Came home, cleaned it all up, and what got me was the wow factor, everybody. Uh, I've done a video on the wow factor and how dangerous that can be, and the wow factor got me. Uh, I went, uh, I, I tried this out before I bought it. It looked all right to me. It sounded good. You know what I mean? It, it, it played great. You know, it's a bit rattly on the frets. It needs a fret level, but that's nothing, you know, nothing major, nothing that I can't, you know, I can I can do that. So I thought, well, yeah, I'll have it. You know, crazy low price that it is, I thought I'd have it. Why not? So I got home, I cleaned it all up and um, started playing on it and just was like, this is wicked. This is a wicked guitar. It plays great. The pickups sound great. It's wired in a bizarre way, uh, which I'll quickly explain, actually. So... Normally, with the Epiphone Customs, when the switch is down, you get that pickup. When the switch is up, you get the net pickup. And then the middle, you get all three. This one is wired slightly different in the fact of down is the bridge pickup alone. Middle is all three. And then up is the middle and the net pickup, which gives the net pickup, uh, well, 
the up position, uh, a really cool... Still sounds like a neck pickup, but when you come down here... It's got a real mellow tone to it. It's really warm. And I really like it because it's got a real... It's really mellow and warm and it's really singy. It really... This guitar's got a lovely voice. Absolutely gorgeous little voice to it. Anyway, so I was happy as Larry. You know, I've, I've just bought an Epiphone Les Paul Custom Black Beauty for nothing, basically. Basically, yeah, pennies. And um, so I was like, you know, on cloud nine. There were a few things. As I took this guitar apart, there were a few things that made me go, that's weird. But it wasn't enough to kill the wow factor in me of like, you know, I've got a... I've got this. And in all fairness, I didn't expect... If this is one of those guitars that I was going to keep for a little while, and then I was just going to move on. You know what I mean? This wasn't a guitar that I was thinking I was ever going to like have forever. So anyway, um, so I started playing around with this, and I was playing it for a good two hours straight. I was just loving it, and I was playing all sorts of stuff on it. And it, it's a real beast. It's a real beast of a guitar. I really love it, and I love the humbuckers in this thing. They sound great. Uh, the back pickup is really microphonic and it feeds back like a beast, but I, you know, I don't mind that. I quite like that, to be honest with you. I don't mind if they're a bit squealy. Anyway, and I just forgot. I didn't care at that point, like, you know, about the things that I'd come up on. Like, you know, there were certain things I was a bit like, oh, that's a bit weird, that's a bit weird. But I had the whole thing apart. The pickups were stamped Epiphone. Uh, they look exactly like the pickups in my actual Epiphone on the wall there. You know, I've had that thing apart so many times. You know, I've got full-size pots in here. The soldering was good. You know, the soldering's actually really good, actually. The, sol the solder working is really good. The wiring's really good. There's no excess wire. The fret work's uh, really good. I mean, it's been played, this guitar has. Uh, so the frets are a bit divoted and a bit worn out, to be honest with you. But if I, I think a fret level, uh, you know, a nice little fret level should sort that out. The nut's good. Uh, the nut's cut fine. It holds tune really well. Uh, so nothing made me go, well, it's a fake. And, I, and I, in all fairness, I was like, fake Epiphone, why would you do it? It's weird, you know, it, it never really, it stuck with me, but I was like, I don't know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So anyway, playing around on this for two hours, loving it, the neck is fantastic, like I say, everything about this guitar is great. I did think the fretboard was a bit weird though, because it's really bright wood, but I just assumed it was just like unconditioned, it was just super dry. So I conditioned the fretboard, polished the frets, and uh, did all that, but it didn't kind of like go dark. So I don't know what the wood of a fretboard is, but anyway. So then I decided to post a picture of this on the socials. So Facebook and Instagram and all that. And um, it wasn't long until some very eagle-eyed people, who I have to issue an, issue an apology to, uh, but I'll do that. I'll do that. And I'll do that more in a minute. But like, that's not right. There's something wrong with your guitar. And I was like, no, it can't be. You know, I've had it apart. You know, I've, I've seen Epiphones in the past. It's got the right stamps. It's, it, it looks right. You know, it's neat and it's very tidy. The wiring's right. Everything's right. Got Because I've seen fake Gibsons. I've seen a lot of fake Gibsons. And they all look ridiculously fake. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, I've, I've seen a lot come by and I've seen quite a few, you know, pictures and I've researched into that quite a lot. I've never researched fake Epiphones before, so I had no idea what to look for. So, um, people were just saying, that's a fake, that's a fake. And I was like, fake Epiphone? You know, and it came back and I was like, totally in disbelief. And, that, and again, and at that point in time, you don't want to admit you've made a total arse of yourself. You know, no one wants to admit they've made a mistake. It's a human condition we all have, where you're just like, no, 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 I know, I know, I know, I, I know I haven't made a mistake. I know what I'm, you know, I know what I'm talking about, and this, that, and the other. And, um, so, but it got the cogs going in my head. So I was just sat there looking at it and thinking, okay, let's dive down this rabbit hole. People were saying it's fake, it's fake, it's fake. And... I was not going to have it. I was not going to have it. I was like, yeah, but why has it got stamped Epiphone pickups and this, that, and the other? And why does it feel so good? And why does it play and sound so good? And, like, you know, not not saying that, you know, it, it, why wouldn't it in, in, in a way? But, so, um, so I dove down the rabbit hole, fake Gibsons, uh, fake Epiphone, sorry. 
And sure enough, came across uh, a really a, a guy's video on YouTube, and sure enough, the penny dropped. It's a total fake. Um, at that point, my mood dropped so far through the floor. It was somewhere near the center of the earth when it finally stopped, and I got hugely depressed, like massively depressed, to the point where I was literally borderline threw this guitar against the wall. Uh, I was really angry at myself. I, I became very, very nasty towards myself for being an idiot and not thinking about things. And I got really unpleasant to myself. Uh, and I don't really want to talk about some of the things I did because it's not very nice. Uh, I to say my head hurts today and my jaw hurts today, but that's about as far as we'll go on that. And I'm sure you can fill in the gaps. But I was like, you're an idiot. You're a total idiot. You don't know anything. You know, you you know that, that Dark Dave came out in full force at that point in time because I was so adamant to these people who said it was a fake that, no, no, it's real, it's real, it's real. It's got an Epiphone branded switch, Epiphone branded pickups. You know, the pots are full-size 500k pots. You know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. But, and it's a hard pill to swallow when you're wrong. It is, you know, it, it's hard for anybody to admit you're wrong. But I was totally wrong. You know, I was so, so wrong on this one. Anyway, so I was like absolutely gutted and I was about ready to throw this guitar out the window and throw myself out with it as well. Uh, preferably onto my head and then that would be that because I, I just felt like a total idiot. I felt like I'd been, you know, I felt like I'd been, I'd been ridiculed and shown up by this guitar. Not by anybody else, by this guitar. Like me, by, by myself as well, if you will. So I, I basically made a fool of myself. And no one likes that. No one likes to feel they've, made, they've been made a fool of by any stretch of means. And no one likes to admit they made a mistake. But, so I got really, really narky to a point where my dad was like, you know, my dad had to come and calm me down. Because I was really, really bad at myself for this. I really lost, lost the plot. And, um... Which wasn't very fun, but anyway, I got I got talking to my dad about it, and we 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 started to dive down the rabbit hole of these guitars. And the more I spoke about it, the more that kind of dark cloud lifted, and it lifted really quickly actually. After after my dad kind of, I started talking to my dad about it. We we my, the the dark cloud lifted very rapidly um, on this guitar, and. I messaged the guy who sold me it, and I said, "Did you?" No, this guitar was a fake. Because I, I just wanted to know. I wasn't going to, like, you know, I wasn't going to go crazy at him or anything like that. I just wanted to know if he knew it was a fake. And he said, no, he didn't know it was a fake. He bought it at a uh, second-hand price from a, uh, well, unfortunately, it's now gone. But a reputable, a, rep a good, <laughs> I can't say that word, reputable, there we go, uh, reputable uh, guitar shop uh, in Doncaster. But it's unfortunately not there anymore. He bought it from there, second hand. It had all the tags. It came in a phone box. And he bought it as a second hand Les Paul. Uh, Epiphone Les Paul Black Beauty Custom. So he wasn't overly happy about it either. He was really annoyed. He, he offered to take the guitar back and refund me money. And, um, and, 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 and in all fairness, I kind of didn't want to lose the guitar. After I started thinking about it, and I was sat, uh, me and my dad were sat talking about this, and I was sat playing the guitar, just, just acoustically unplugged, and I was just sat playing it, and I was like, I like this guitar. And there's a, and it's also teaching me that, again, it's a very humbling experience of listen to people. Don't think you ever know, because odds are you will come a time where you don't, you think you know, and you don't. So I have to issue a massive apology to people who said this was a fake and I didn't believe them because my pride got in the way of it, which is very, very silly, but it happens to us. Unfortunately, as humans, that happens. So I've got to issue you a massive apology. So everybody who said this was fake, uh, I am so sorry for not listening to you and letting my pride get the best of me and just basically kind of like clouding my vision of 
of what this guitar actually is. So I do apologize immensely and I am so sorry for not believing you and just kind of being a bit of an old stick in the mud and just being basically an idiot, which is exactly what I was. You know, I was an idiot. I was, um, I, it, it, was the, it was the whole thing, like I say, it was pride. Just like, nope, 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 nope. I'm not going to have that I've been made a fool of. You know what I mean? I'm not going to have it. You know, just, uh, you know I don't, I, 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 I think, that is one of the real bad human conditions we have of is literally kind of like the whole idea of like we are we are prone to kind of not want to admit we've made mistakes you know what i mean yeah we we don't want to admit we've we've cocked up lack of a better word but i did so i apologize immensely for everybody who was telling me this was a fake and they're trying to point me in the right direction and this and this so i'm so sorry um you know please um you know accept my very very humble apology of, of basically being an idiot so anyway so we dove down the rabbit hole me and my dad of this guitar and i was messaging the guy and he offered to take it back for the money eventually what we did is i got a partial refund i got half refund uh, from this so basically i technically paid absolutely nothing for this guitar um you know in the terms of you know what it is it i paid nothing you know, it was, and in all fairness, what I did pay for it for what the guitar is, you know, I'm, I'm happy with because I really love this guitar. And like I say, this will stand now as a testament to me because I can't sell this. You know, I don't, you know, I, I could, I could, you know, I, I, I can't do anything with this guitar other than keep it now. And that's fine by me because it will stand as a reminder that you don't know everything. So listen to people when they talk to you. Do not let that part of your pride get in the way of what people are saying. And take people's advice on board if there's even a slight inkling that you might be wrong about something. And funny enough, as soon as I, what, I looked at the video on YouTube about fake Epiphones. And the more I looked at it, and I was like, yeah, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. And then it just stuck out to me like a sore thumb, but yeah, this guitar, although it looks fantastic, because it does, and it plays fantastic, and it sounds great. It's so wrong in so many ways. And I was looking at my Epiphone on the wall there, and I was comparing the two, and I was like, yeah, it's totally not right, is it? So anyway, um, and I'll talk about what those things are in a bit. Anyway, so, um, so I, I I did a deal with the guy I bought this from, you know, uh, he wasn't overly happy that he he bought this guitar three years ago, and he'd had it for three years and didn't and didn't know, and uh, I didn't know either. It fooled me. The wow factor definitely got to me with this one. Uh, it was it was the price of it. I was like, that's such a low price. That's you know, that's such a cool low price. I'm having it, and that low price turned into an even lower price. But anyway, so. Um, so yeah, so we dove down the rabbit hole, me and my dad did, and I was playing this, and I was like, I don't want to lose it. So we came to an agreement with a guy, and now I own this guitar. This is my guitar, and it's going nowhere. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so... We started to look into why somebody would fake an Epiphone. And it just makes me wonder about this one, because the guy I bought this from said it came in an ep it, well. It got me and my dad wondering. It came in an Epiphone case, you know, an Epico Epiphone box with all the tags. And it just makes me wonder, did this one get in to the Epiphone factory? You know, did somebody swap this fake out for a real one? You know, and you know, half inch the real one, put this one in its stead, packaged this one up, and this, had, this ended up in England as a real Epiphone, and it's done the rounds, you know, and now it's ended up with me. You know, is, is that how it happened, you know? But I then, and we were just like thinking of stories of it, and like at that point, it's like I wish this thing could speak. Anyway, um, and then we dove down the rabbit hole even further and started to understand of why people would replicate an Epiphone. Why would you fake an Epiphone? Why not just fake it as a Gibson? And uh, we stumbled across this 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 thread in a forum of this guy, and he had a great point. He had a very very interesting point on it, and. Um, 
Because people were saying, oh, why would you fake Epiphones as well? People were like, why? Why would you do it? It doesn't make any sense. Epiphone are already a budget model, so why would you do it? And the idea behind this, this, this the idea this guy had was the reason people fake Epiphones in China, Taiwan, wherever, uh, is because even Epiphones out there are unobtainable. They're too expensive. Epiphones are still too expensive. You know, um, you know, and, and people can't afford them. You know, people can't even afford an Epiphone. An Epiphone is basically, you know, a Gibson is pointless. You're never going to get a Gibson, uh, but you're never going to get an Epiphone either because there's no way you could afford one of those. You know what I mean? So people, you know, and, and this guy said, if, if you really wanted one of these guitars, but you could never afford it in a million years, but some local guy says, I can build you one of those for a fraction of the price of a real Epiphone. I can get the headstock logo. I can do all this. I can wire it. I can do, I can get all of all the parts. You would go for it because I would, if I was in that situation, if you wanted a good guitar, you know what I mean? And somebody offered to make you a guitar that you couldn't afford for a really cheap price that you could afford, you would go for it. And I thought that was a really interesting point because I was like, that does make total sense. You know, and we're kind of, you know, I've always kind of like come from that world of I'll never own a Gibson because they're far too expensive. And that's you know, very, very possible that I'll never own a Gibson because they are far too, they're way out of my price range. I could not afford to buy a Gibson guitar. Um, so if somebody came to me and said, I can build you a copy of a Gibson 1957 gold top that will look and feel the same way, sound the same way, and it'll be a great guitar, because this is a great guitar, and I can do it for a fraction of the price, I would say yes. You know what I mean? If somebody, if, like, if, if somebody offered me a 57 reissue gold top Les Paul, you know, with Gibson on the head, like, or whatever, you know what I mean? And it was a fraction of the price of a real Gibson, but it felt great and it sounded great and it looked right, I would go for it. So that's why these guitars exist. And I, I that's why I feel these guitars exist. Should I, say? I agree with that guy totally. Because over there, like I say, guitars are not easy to come by. Very expensive. You know, they are a luxury item. And we will take that for granted over here because they are so readily available. You, know, you, can, you can pick up a Squire Bullet for £110, you know what I mean? Or you could pick up, like, you know, an Epiphone secondhand for 250 200 quid, 300 depending on what it is. So, and we kind of take that for granted that, that that price is absolutely an astronomical in places where these things are made. And I thought that was a great insight into why people fake these Epiphones. Because for the longest time, I was like, fake an Epiphone, what is the point? But it makes total sense now, because like I say, if, if somebody came to me and said, I can build you a Les Paul gold top for less than less than a Gibson, you know, and it'll sound, it's, it'll sound the same, it'll feel the same, and it, it'll look the way you want it to, would you go for it? Of course I would. Of course I would. I wouldn't care that it wasn't a real Gibson, because at the end of the day, I don't care this isn't a real Epiphone anymore. Because what this guitar has taught me is, like I say, apart from being humble and don't let pride get in the way and also beware the wow factor, my dears, is at the end of the day, if a guitar's good, it doesn't matter what it is. And that's something I always stand by. And is this a good guitar? This is a wicked guitar. The frets are rattly. And there's a dead one. Somewhere there. It's a bit dead. But it sounds great. And it plays great. It looks great. And it feels great. And it is great. So I love this guitar immensely now. Even more. Last night about 10 o'clock when I found out it was fake. I was ready to shove this out the window with me following it. Hoping I'd break my neck and that would be the end of my humiliation on it. But the, humili the humiliation has taught me. It's not really, it's a humiliation for me because of, you know, I've, I've, I've thought, you know, I was, 
dark day, I need to go. You know what I mean? I thought I was an idiot and I was useless and a loser and I should just go and jump out the window and land on my head because you're no good for anything. Um, but this guitar has taught me that, you know what? There's people out there who this is a 1959 Gibson Les Paul to. You know, this is something they could strive to own but might never even get the chance to own this. And it made me go, I am so grateful for what I have and the fact that I'm able to buy things like this for what I would class as nothing. And it made me go, really... What's the word? Made me really humbled by that fact of some places in the world have to fake Epiphone because that's like a Gibson. That's like a vintage Gibson to them. And I thought that is really, at the same time, upsetting, extremely humbling and should not be taken for granted. So... When people say, oh, why the hell would you fake an Epiphone? That's why. I totally agree with that guy's, sen that, that guy's statement and sentiment of why you would fake these things. You know, because, like I say, you know, if you can't afford the real thing, something like this is the next best thing. I mean, it really is, you know. This is a great, and this is a great guitar. So uh, I hope some of that has made some kind of sense. I, I really hope that's made some kind of sense. But anyway, so that's why these are faked because they are Epiphone are revered. They're an expensive guitar brand in certain places where these things are made. And these are made by who knows who made this guitar. Who knows who made this guitar and why did it? Because I'll tell you what, Epiphone needs to hire them. And give them access to things that they should have access to. Because the, the this guitar is incredible. The fit, the finish, the feel, the sound, the stability of it is incredible. This is a great, great guitar. There's, there, are, there are no issues with this guitar. I'm sure there will be in years to come. But I don't know how old this thing is. Uh, the guy's had it for three years. He bought it second hand then. So God knows how old this thing is. It's got a fake serial number on it. We can't use that. But... It's lasted, you know, and it's been played and, you know, it's been used and it's going to continue to be used by me. And I love it because it's a real humbling big lesson, this guitar to me. And it will stand as a reminder to never let pride get in the way of what people are saying to you and just think before you do things and don't let the wow factor get in the way and also a good guitar is a good guitar and also be grateful for what you've got because some people would love it and can't get it you know what i mean so it's just it was it was a very humbling experience this guitar and i'm very very grateful for it and i'm really grateful for people who pointed out that it was a fake and my massive apology to those people who i wasn't listening to because my pride got away like no 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 it can't be a fake it can't be a fake because i just didn't want to admit i was wrong Again, another human condition we all have. Um, you know, it's just one of those things we all do. Uh, but yeah, so I love this guitar. And is it a good guitar? Yeah, it's awesome. And I'll do a video on it in a couple of months when I've um, I've lived with it for a while. You know, I'll, I'll, do a, I'll do a full review on it. Because it is a great guitar and I do love it. I really do love it. And it stands now as a, as a testament to certain things. And I really do... It's cool. It's really cool. Anyway, so let me quickly talk about some of the things that people pointed out to me to prove this was a fake. Okay, so um, number one is the headstock's too big. It's too long at this top end here. That's far too big. That's And also the diamond's in the wrong place. And also the truss rod cover, which unfortunately I don't think you'll be able to see, is really rough and nasty. So the truss rod cover is not cut brilliantly. But, you know, either way. So that was one of the things. Another thing was the binding on the headstock is far too, oops, sorry, I do apologize, uh, is far too thick. You can see the binding takes up half the headstock. 
So you got the white binding and then the black uh, headstock there. Uh, the the binding takes up too much of a headstock, so the, the binding is far too thick for um, for an Epiphone. So that shouldn't be like that. Another thing was the fake Grovers with the wrong font on there and also wrong keys. They're too flat. And also on the front, there is these washers, these oversized washers here on the machine head with this kind of like dome to them. They've got, they've got a kind of like a dome to them. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but they're totally wrong. So these Grovers are fake. They hold tune though, so uh, no issues there. Okay, so uh, moving on. Uh, another thing we to note is the alignment of these, the, the control dials, the volume and the tone dials. They're off axis, so they're totally askew. If you look at them to in line of a guitar, they don't, you know, they're all askew. But they're not bad, you know what I mean? The, the spacing's fine, you can get to them fine, but they're not right. Uh, also, another thing to point out was on the tailpiece, uh, the screws on the tailpiece are domed. So these two screws here have a dome to them like that. Epiphone are flat. Uh, and I think most Gibsons are flat. Um, so they're wrong. So dome screws are a big no-no. Uh, also the body shape, if you look really closely, and this is a great one. If you look at the actual body shape here, this is far too big. The, the slope off here is far too big. Like the gap between the bottom of the selector switch and the neck is massive you know what i mean and that's not right and again we have binding issues on the body of it's far too thick the binding is far too thick um the pickups have kind of like done this weird oxidization thing i don't think you'll be able to see these uh hang on a minute uh if i get it in light properly they're not very clean they've done this weird oxidization thing where the gold basically is just flaked off because it's just cheap um, so yeah, that's another thing to note that these pickups look bad. Uh, the scratch plate is not right either. It's really rough. It's just, I think it's a two ply. No, it's a three ply. It's, it's a three ply plate, but it's just really rough. Uh, the screw position there is in the wrong place as well. It should be further up, more to the middle of the, of the pit, pit guard like mine, mine are. So that's too far down. Um, the neck... Again, the wood is just far too bright and light. I don't know what the wood is. Don't care anymore. Um, what else was there to point out? Uh, oh yeah, the bushings as well in the in the body. But the, the bushing in the body, they don't fit quite right. They're a bit. They're not. They're not loose. They fit fine, but they're a bit kind of like hanging out. Not in a bad way. Not in a kind of structural structurally bad way at all. But uh, but yeah. So. That's that. Uh, well, so uh, is there anything else to point out? No. People of the tube, if uh, there's anybody out there who knows any other ways to spot a fake Epiphone, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Let us know if there's anything I've missed, because I'm sure I've missed quite a few things. But like I say, there are some dodgy things about this, but it fooled me, and it just goes to show, you know, uh, it, you know, the wow factor gets in the way of that. Looking at this now, it stinks. You know what I mean? Look at it, looking at this through the cold light of day, now knowing, because this guitar has taught me how to look at, for a fake Epiphone, I will never make this mistake again. But again, you learn from mistakes. You need to make mistakes to learn. And that's exactly what this guitar is. This is a lesson. And it's a great lesson in humility, being humble, ex you know, listening to other people, and also knowing that you know nothing. Um, but also the fact of a good guitar is a good guitar regardless of what it is. So uh, anyway, but other than that, I'll tell you what, this guitar is fantastic. The binding is great. The fit and finish is great. It's a solid weighty thing. It'll be plywood. It won't be real wood. Um, it won't be like mahogany or anything like that. It'll just be kind of like chipboard, particle board or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the lacquer is pristine there is no blemishes there is no um kind of abnormalities in the lacquer at all the lacquer is perfect it's scratched to hell because it's been used but it's you know it's it's cool 
you know, the lacquer's great. The neck carve is fantastic. The neck on this is brilliant. Um, again, the nut is amazing. The nut fits perfectly. It's cut really well. It's smooth. It's not sharp. Uh, everything about this guitar is great. And also, the thing that this is, and this is what fooled me. So I had this guitar apart. When I started to suspect something was a bit off, I thought, right, I need to know. So let's have a look at the pickups. Let's look at the parts. Look at the switch, and let's have a look. Because the Grovers were one of the things I was like, they look a bit weird. But I didn't think I again the the wow factor was with me. I took the pickups out, and they actually say Epiphone on them. They're stamped, and they look exactly like the pickups in my Epiphone on the wall there. So I was like, okay, well, okay, that looks about right. So I took the selector switch out. It said Epiphone on it as well, and it's a good high quality switch. So I was like, oh, that'd be that'd be all right. Looked in the cavity, the pots are full size cavity, uh, full size pots with amazingly good soldering work. No excess wire, everything's perfect. You know, the, everything's done the way it should be. So I was like, oh, the electrics are right, and the you know the the lacquer looks right. The you know I did think the binding was a bit weird, but I didn't you know I was like, no, no, you haven't made a mistake. You haven't made a mistake. You haven't made a mistake. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know. I didn't obviously, but doesn't matter. It just goes to show we are all. We are all at the mercy of the wow factor. And I was looking at the Grovers and I was thinking, the Grovers don't look right either. But I just, because they look really tarnished, uh, they don't shine. But I just to kind of like put it down to the fact that this guitar has been around, because I dated it, 2000, the serial number dates this to 2008. So I just assumed they're tarnished because it's been used a lot and it's been played a lot and it feels like it's been played a lot. It feels like it's been really heavily used, this guitar. So, um... But yeah, so there we go, people of the tube. Was I an idiot? Totally. Was I a fool? Totally. Did I make a mistake? Yes. But did I learn from that? Definitely. I won't make this mistake again. And let this just be a, a warning as well of this kind of guitar lives out there. You know what I mean? It, 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 it could just be... It could... It, it, it could it, This could have happened to anyone. It really was one of those things of like, I saw the price and just went off my rocker and the wow factor kicked in. And the wow factor, for people who don't know what I'm on about, the wow factor is the wow factor is when you see something and you get so overwhelmed by how, how amazing the price is or what it is that you can't see the wood for the trees. You know, you're just literally blinded by, oh my God! You know what I mean? It's one of those things. And that's what this guitar did to me. It wowed me before me actually really understanding what its bones were. So, um, so yeah, just, so bear this in mind, people of the tube, you know, heed my warning, so to say, that there are fake Epiphones. I didn't believe it, to be honest with you. I was like, no way, would you, why is the point? But, Talking about what I spoke about earlier on the fact of like Epiphones in some countries are unobtainable because they're far too expensive and they are like a Gibson over here, you know what I mean? Uh, or a Fender, you know what I mean? It, you know, or, 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 a, or a high quality Gretsch or, or, or um, you know, a Sir or a, uh, think of others, PRS, you know what I mean? These guitars are unobtainable in those countries. So... The way they see Epiphone is the way we see Gib high rate, high level Gibsons, Fenders, PRS, Sirs. You know what I mean? Uh, that's the way you know we see it. That's the way they. That's where they see Epiphone. And I think that's a really interesting point, and it's a very humbling point, and it makes me feel extremely grateful to be surrounded by the guitars I have, and also it makes me feel grateful to be able to play these things and not not be kind of like you know i'm just a lucky sod as are most of us we are lucky lucky people if you know we see these guitars as cheap because some people this this guitar is unobtainable to some people they'll never own this guitar this is a guitar even though it's a fake they'll look at it and go i could never afford that and that to me breaks my heart because it just, I don't know, it just feels wrong. It just feels wrong. But um, but like I say, this guitar will stand now as a lesson uh, to me forever. And I really love it. And like I say, I can't sell it. I don't want to sell it. 
I can't get. I, I I don't want to give it away because that feels weird as well, uh, because it's a fake. So, my mistake cost me a bit of money, and I'm lumped with a fake guitar. But do I mind? No. I don't care, because this guitar is wicked, and I love it, and it looks fantastic. It looks amazing. I love it. Yes, it's fake. I don't care though. Yeah, you know I mean, I really don't care. This is right. It's, it's a fake, yeah, but it's, it's a replica of an Epiphone. <laughs> Use the word replica. Anyway, people of the tube, there you go. So I was caught out, and I was an idiot, and I was a fool, and I made a lot of mistakes with this one. Uh, a lot of mistakes which I've spoken about, which means we're never immune from that, even though we know about mistakes we've made in the past, we will make them again. So just uh, always be aware. And like I say, hopefully this video can stand as a bit of a warning for some of the fake Epiphones that are floating around out there, like, you know, binding being too thick, Grover's looking wrong, the domed washer on the headstock that's oversized, the headstock being too big, uh, the diamond in the wrong place, the pickups tarnishing in a weird way, the dimensions of the body being wrong, the alignment of the controls being wrong, the scratch plate looking cut wrong, you know, the lines aren't right on it, you know, the electrics and this that, and the other. But at the end of the day, is it a good guitar? Yeah, it's a great guitar. It may not be worth uh, what I paid for it, but it's worth it because it's a good guitar and I've got a really cool, unique sounding guitar, especially that neck pickup with the middle pickup in gate. Let me just go to a cleaner sound. When, when you go to the neck, tone to it and it's got a lovely little voice because of these two humbuckers and I don't know what these humbuckers are and I, I don't care because it sings It's absolutely stunning and it's a really unique little beast and I love it and like I say it's a real it's a real lesson learner this one it was, it was a mistake that I have learned from and in learning from will not be caught out by this again and hopefully some of the things that I've spoke about today and hopefully some of the things that like you know people have put in the comment section below about how to spot fake headphones will stand so you can see what the Epiphone you're buying is second hand. And you know, if you see certain things that this has, you know it's not gonna it's not real, it's not a real Epiphone. So then you'll know. And knowing is half the battle. Oh whatever it is, I don't know. Oh, that's, that's not bad. One one phone interruption in the video. But yeah, I mean <laughs> It's glorious.
glorious. It's absolutely glorious. So, yeah, I hope some of this has made some kind of sense, everybody. But I have been had by a fake, and that's okay. It's okay to make mistakes, as long as you learn from them. And that is the purpose of a mistake, is to learn from it. To go, right, yeah, I cocked up. I made a total fool myself with this one, but that's okay. That's okay, because it won't happen again. And now I know, and now I, and because I know now, I can help other people as well see this. You know what I mean? Instead of just kind of like, you know, being ignorant to it, which, which is exactly what I was. I was massively ignorant to the whole idea of a fake epiphone. I was like, why would you do it? It seems stupid to me. But there you go. I've got one. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, people with tube, there you go. That's my story. Uh, that's this guitar. Totally had me. Yeah, total fool. But do I regret it? No. I do regret not listening to people who knew more than me. And knew, who knew from the get-go that this was wrong and knew better than me. But that's my own failing that I didn't listen but you know hopefully I've rectified that today and like I said I am very sorry to the people who were trying to tell me I wasn't going to listen because like I said I was so determined not to be wrong and again silly human conditions that we have you know it was very silly very silly but again it's not a mistake I intend to make twice so um, thank you so much to everybody who, who, were try who was trying to help me understand that this wasn't real and uh yeah thank you very much indeed and thank you very much indeed for watching everybody like i say fake epiphones exist i wouldn't have believed it myself but i understand why they exist now i totally get understand i uh, totally get and understand why people would fake these things and i hopefully hopefully there's something in this video hopefully there's something in the video i hope what i've spoken about makes sense um, I'm terrified this hasn't made any sense whatsoever. So hopefully there's something in it. Anyway, people with tube, thank you very much for watching. Shall we hear more of this guitar? I think we shall. Again, I'm on room mic, so I don't know how well it's going to pick it up, but hopefully it'll be okay.